there. My name is Kay Byfield, and this is your Art Speak Studio moment from Art Speak Studio in Dallas, Texas, where we offer online and in studio classes, mostly in watercolor. And today we're going to talk about vignettes and the way vignettes are used in painting. Years ago, in one of my watercolor classes, the assignment was to do a painting that was structured as a vignette. An online dictionary defines a vignette as a small illustration or portrait photograph where the edges of the composition fade out to, to white or black. And this is used as a design tool to focus attention on the main subject. Vignettes have long been used in graphic design and photography, but I don't see a lot of discussion of them in painting. Here we see an advertisement created by Norman Rockwell that uses a vignette. The white space around the image allows for advertising copy. And here's an example of an antique photograph a portrait of a young woman. Vignettes are still very popular in photography today. In painting, vignettes are really useful in focusing attention to the central information and not allowing all the extraneous information around it to take away from what the real interest is. This enables the viewer to make assumptions and imagine what is around that subject. It also allows the artist to take what might be a static composition and give it more energy and make it more interesting and make it look looser, as we see in this painting. Any subject can lend itself to being vignetted. Here's an example of a painting of a bouquet of roses there's no information about what the context is for the painting. All we have are suggestions of blue and purple in terms of the background. So the painting becomes about color and shape and not about anything else. In this way, the painting is very much like a non-objective painting that becomes about all of the elements of design and not about the subject. Rather than using a soft, nondescript background as Janet Rogers did with the roses, Alicia Ferris creates a high key suggestion of a brick wall to stabilize the portrait of this little girl. The painting is done on Yupo, a synthetic painting material that holds the pigment on the surface and gives it a very interesting surface quality. The brick wall is slightly on a tilt to keep it from becoming too static and it does still stabilize the composition. Most of my examples of vignetted paintings are figures, but Jason Yao uses vignettes frequently in his paintings as he does in this nautical piece. It appears that there's some kind of turbulence going on. He suggests some forms of boats. There's a lot of white space that lead the eye around the piece and the suggestions that he uses make it a very engaging painting. His use of soft and hard edges for his shapes allow the eye to move around the composition and leave a lot open to the imagination of the viewer. And this painting of a dancer caught at the apex of his leap is an extremely good example of the effectiveness of vignetting. The background is extremely loosely painted and it, it has a, a very dynamic diagonal uh, direction to it, which supports the movement of the dancer, but also, from a design standpoint, supports the intention of the painting. Because horizontals are very, very stable. Verticals are stable, but there is an implication of potential movement. However, diagonals, that, is the position to be in movement. So the artist has done a really good job here with the vignette supporting the painting. And in addition to that, she has edges that sometimes are hard, like the, like the foot that's up in the air, and 
are sometimes blurred and lost in the background like the other foot. And so that also supports the idea of extremely rapid movement caught in a moment. To me, this is one of the most successful vignettes I've seen in a long time. The figure is in a cruciform position with the bucket in the left hand painted very naturalistically, but the bucket on the right and the drape around his waist are just suggested. The pose and the soft focus background make the composition very theatrical with the use of chiaroscuro and the position of the figure and the vignette shape. The suggestion of a religious association with this is belied a little bit by the title and the buckets. And so that adds another layer of interest. Thank you for joining us for this short introduction to vignettes. I hope this will offer another compositional option for you, and perhaps there's a vignette in your future. In the meantime, happy painting.